Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, work on skilling up my crafting a little bit, and let's uh, talk about this. All right, guys, Christian Guzman has gotten himself into a little bit of uh, legal and civil trouble. Um, I had to use both words, by the way, because I have a big UK audience and a big American audience. Uh, legal in the UK means the same thing as civil in the United States, whereas then usually like legal in the US means the same thing as criminal <laughs> in the UK. It gets really confusing for the, the cross audience because the language isn't exactly the same, even though it's English. So that being said, uh, he's got a civil suit filed against him that he probably is not going to win, and I'm going to get into that in a minute. Now, that being said... Uh, I don't necessarily think Christian Guzman is necessarily a completely bad person because I have seen at least some real world positive effect. I met someone in the middle of a Denny's before um, who was in his 50s, guy was pretty jacked, and he said, you know, he had previously done some bodybuilding, he had played, uh, I guess, like high school and college football years before, uh, and then got out of lifting for about a decade. And then he decided to do Christian summer shredding thing, and he got back into really good shape a couple years before. And he had spent about two years training really hard again after previously having built a big foundation and taken quite a few years off. And the guy was in phenomenal shape for being in his... Actually, he was in good shape for even a guy in his 20s. Like, just be honest, he looked better, had more muscle mass overall uh, than probably the average 20-year-old I see in the gym who's working out easily, easily. So the guy was uh, doing pretty good. And so, you know, Christian got this guy into the gym, and I'm sure he got some other guys back in the gym. Um, so he seems to be a reasonably inspirational person. So I can't really fault him for that. Uh, my problem is that, of course, he decides to jump into the supplement industry. Well, Christian, you just got a real good taste of the supplement industry. Everyone in it just about is a snake oil salesman. They're con men. It is a vicious, backstabbing industry, and they run the online fitness world now. Uh, in fact, anyone who stands against them and tries to promote real fitness or stand against their nonsense will get hammered flat. They come after you hard. Look how hard people have come after me. You don't think that's any coincidence when you look at some of the people who've paid for it? Massive supplement shills have publicly admitted to spending huge amounts of money harassing me. Well, you just stepped on the toes of another company. You just stepped on their toes, Christian. But the thing is, I don't necessarily feel bad for the guy because he jumped up and got involved in the whole supplement hustle and energy drinks and other stuff. You know what? If you're going to become a snake oil salesman, you're going to jump into the shark tank with these evil scumbag pieces of shit. Expect to get bit. You better learn to toughen up. Uh, you better be ready to roll with the punches because they don't like competition. And the people in this industry are vicious. Have no doubt about it. They're not good people. Anyone involved in the supplement world, they're not good people. At all. And he just got a little bit of a taste of it. He got a little bit of a taste of it. So I, what did he do? He created an energy drink. And I think he called it Up Energy Drink. I believe that's the name. The problem is it's got a big white bottle. And he's got the word up on it with an arrow pointed up. Right? With an arrow pointed up on a white, long bottle. Totally white bottle. The problem is a bigger company called, I guess, Uptime Drink or Uptime Energy Drink. A longer standing company. They have a trademark on that. They own it. They also have had for a while a white bottle with basically the word up with three arrows going through it. So they basically have a slightly more complex version of the logo that he used. And there's definite similarities. Even I, as someone, I'm not real big on copyrights. I'm, I'm big on free business. I don't like a lot of government restrictions. I don't like the idea of, um, of people copywriting or trademarking everything. I'm not real big on it. It is what it is. Uh, I think it's abused a lot. But even I'm looking at this going, man, did you basically just copy their design? It could be coincidence. It could be coincidence. And it very well might be. It might have been an honest mistake that he just came up with this in his head. And here's the thing. People think they come up with stuff in their head. But the reality is we don't always come up with stuff. Oftentimes that we think are our own creative ideas are things that we've observed and seen in the subliminal. So 
He might have legitimately thought he came up with the idea, but at some point he saw sitting in a gym or sitting on the shelf, he saw that bottle and it imprinted in his head and maybe subconsciously that's where he drew it from. It was probably the inspiration for his thing, whether he knew it or not, or maybe he just straight up copied it. Um, I would like to think anyone who's going to try to get into business wouldn't be stupid enough to do that. I'd like to think that he wouldn't be dumb enough to just straight copy it. It probably was a case of it was in his subconscious and he was coming up with ideas and not realizing he basically took someone else's idea. Which is well and good most of the time. I mean, there's nothing wrong with taking other people's ideas and using them uh, to further stuff. But when you start messing with copyrighted stuff, trademark stuff, um, using that as inspiration or ideas, unless you make such a dramatic change that it can't be identified, from the, the parent material you might have used as part of your inspiration, but in this case it looks like almost the totality of the inspiration, um, you're gonna find yourself into trouble when you start making money on it. And that's the difference. It's one thing if it's something you're just doing as a project that's uh, no profit involved, because that's what they're gonna nail him on is the profits. They're claiming that they have lost revenue because of his product, that people have been buying his product instead of theirs, and his is a rip off of their product. Uh, and they're pr going to prove, and that's what they're going to try to prove in court, is that he stole their designs, making money off of it, therefore he owes them that money. Now, he did this fairly early on, and here's the thing. Um, Christian could find himself really, really losing a lot of money on this. Um, and I'm not a lawyer. I'm definitely not a civil lawyer. He probably needs to lawyer up, talk to a good lawyer, one who's not going to try to take him for money, because that's what he's going to have to watch. Lawyers are good at running up a bill. They love to run up a bill. Look at what those lawyers did to Lane Norton when he sued me. Look how far they ran up his bill, and they didn't get any money back for him. All they did was get a paper judgment. All they did was harass me, and they kept running his bill up. And I knew how to make his lawyers run up the bill. I intentionally was a dick and ran his bill up further because the guy was harassing me unjustified. So, yeah, I ran his bill up with his lawyers. You bet I did. I made them do extra work. You know what? All's fair in love and war. You want to harass someone with the lawyers, get ready to pay. Because lawyers love running up a bill. And that's the thing Christian's going to have to be careful of. This may not be a case that he can win. This might be a case to where he's going to lose a hell of a lot of money if he goes to court. So he's going to have to figure out for himself, if he wants to try to settle and get them to just back off and give a low settlement and get out of the business, maybe even give them his product, Say, hey, look, I'll pay you this amount of money. Take the product. It's yours. You own it again. It's I, I don't want it anymore. Here's the money for your loss um, and get out of it. Because what's going to happen if his lawyer runs up a really high bill and the lawyer might tell him, no, no, let's fight it. Let's stick it out. Um, we might be able to win this just so the lawyer can make an extra $100,000. But when it's said and done, um, he's not getting out of this without paying six figures unless he chooses to somehow walk away from it, ignore it, and somehow has his access hidden or juggled enough, but he owns, I think, a gym and stuff. Now he's not going to be able to do this. He probably has too much stuff in his name to pull this off. Um, he's just not getting out of this without spending a lot of money. He might want to consider at least asking his lawyer, do, do I need to just settle and be done with this? Might be his best bet. Just get out of this particular uh, business with these energy drinks. Might be his best bet. Um, because if he stays in business with it, they're basically going to own it. They're the ones who are going to be making the big money off of it, not him. And he's already going to have to cut them a big-ass check for his losses. He's already going to have to pay legal fees. And so if he goes to court with it, um, his legal fees alone could get up into six figures, not to mention the damages. Um, you know, and they might be willing to just settle with it. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know what advice to give him on that other than he better very, very carefully choose his options. He better pick his lawyer very carefully and discuss this, quite frankly, uh, because it doesn't look good. It's not. This isn't going to go good for him anyway he does it. And I guess part of me says, you know what? You want to jump into the supplement industry? You want to jump into the supplement business and be a shill um, and a snake oil salesman? All right, fine. I mean, but you might get what's coming to you. There's karma. It goes around, comes around. Uh, and if you want to jump into a shady business like that, you better be ready. Uh, just like the same token, if you want to stand against a shady set of businesses like that, you better also be ready to roll with the punches uh, because they're ruthless. It's an absolutely ruthless industry. Absolutely ruthless industry. 
and uh, he's learning the hard way. So there you go, Christian. You, I would really wish you had just stuck to maybe give an inspiration and workout advice and not got involved with these cocksucking supplements and these cocksuckers in the industry because that's what they are. They're a bunch of evil cocksuckers who con people, rip people off for a living. That's what the whole supplement industry is based upon, ripping people off for profit. And you want to go tangle with these people. You want to get involved in these people. Uh, you want to get into their line of work. You need to understand that you can't stay a good person and be a con man for a living. So I think now is a good time for Christian to step back and assess. Does he want to make an honest living and actually help people? Or does he want to be involved with all these con men and snake oil salesmen and be a piece of shit scam artist for a living? Uh, now would be the time to decide when it's only going to cost you, you know, a six-figure settlement probably. Now would be a good time to figure that out. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.